Well, hi everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Now, the other day I had an opportunity to go on a live chat with Red Pill Philosophy and Nathan Thompson, where we got to talking about the rotating spherical Earth and gravity. And, of course, the question came up, what's my evidence? So, let's go through this debate and see how it turned out. Uh, I think that uh, Nathan probably was a little over his head. So let's go ahead and cue up the music and get started. All right, so if the Earth is a flat... If the Earth, oh uh, my... Formal logical fallacy. Formal logical oh, fallacy. Oh, 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 right. Affirming the consequence. Now, this is a pretty common tactic that they employ on these debates, if that's what you want to call them. Uh, they asked me to go ahead and present my evidence. So I started off with, if the Earth is a flat, stationary plane, and I couldn't even finish the sentence before ranty flat Earth is yelling, if, 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 and, and red pill philosophy is screaming logical fallacy. Now, I want to know what kind of a logical fallacy it is to sit down and say, if the Earth is a flat and stationary plane. Now, it should be noted that I had attempted to start this line of questioning a number of times and begin my argument, only to be told to get started, and then as soon as I said a single word, they're talking over me. Now, my tactic for dealing with this is to simply stop talking. After a long and uncomfortable pause, they finally agree to allow me to continue. Now, in this case, I was able to get out if the Earth is a flat and stationary plane before I was being interrupted. Now, the purpose of these interruptions is to derail the train of thought, derail the argument, and just basically disrupt. They know they're in trouble because I'm here. So they have to use all of these tricks to try and derail the conversation. But let's let them go ahead and continue. Now, if the Earth is a non-moving flat plane, if I am trying to figure out how a gyro compass at any point on the Earth knows where the Earth is. Can you help me out with that? Now, now one, one thing that you may pick up is that we're having some audio difficulties here. Red Pill Philosophy is running this hangout here, and he's adjusting the volumes of the participants. You may have heard that my volume was just cut. Now, this is a pretty common tactic that they use. They generally double up on their volume, and anybody that is presenting, they drop the volume on them to try and take, out, take away from their points. Now, one thing that you may pick up on as well is that Red is in the background with an unmuted mic, constantly typing away on his keyboard, again, to deteriorate the quality of my audio so that I'm more difficult to understand. Now, I had raised the question of how does a mechanical gyro compass anywhere in the Earth know how to point to the geographical North Pole? Now, the person that's going to field this question is Mr. Nathan Thompson. So I want you to have a listen to his presentation. And recall, this is a mechanical gyro compass. It is not a magnetic compass. It has nothing to do with a magnetic compass. So let's listen to Nathan try and get out of this. So you're talking about a mechanical, a ring laser, a or a fiber optic? No, a mechanical gyro compass. Can you tell me how it always knows what where true north is? I got it, Ranty. Because um, uh, compasses work, and we obviously have star movement in the sky, and this is caused because we have a firmament, firmament in an electromagnetic field that points north. Compass needles are straight. The meridian lines are straight. I'm getting a little feedback from someone who's not muted. But they're not convex semicircles. A globe with a 9,000 degree molten core would reach a curry point and would not be able to hold electromagnetism. Scientists like 
Professor Dan Lanthrop of the University of Maryland have not been able to recreate the dynamo threshold ever in the history of time. So the idea that compasses and all this stuff works on a globe is just a fairy tale. You're actually just trying to reverse the burden of proof and not talk about curvature and not talk about rotation. And it's kind of pathetic. Well, actually, you know, the really funny thing about that, Mr. Nathan Thompson, head of the largest Facebook flat earth group, I wasn't talking about a magnetic compass. I was very clear, a mechanical gyro compass. So why don't you pull that word salad back and try yeah, it? Great. Mechanical gyros. Do the does the gimbal base a account for any location? Gyro compass. How does it work? I don't know, Bob. I'm not familiar with mechanical gyro compasses. Do you want to explain how it proves we're on a spinning ball for everyone? Yeah, very easily. I'll be more than happy to. A mechanical great, gyro compass has got a spinning gyroscope in it that is restricted in one axis. And as a result, it will process. And it will process when on a rotating object to match the axis of the rotation of that larger rotating object that it's on. That's how a mechanical gyro compass, which uses gravity to restrict the axis in, in restrict the uh, rotation in one axis, processes to match the north south axis of rotation of the earth and finds true north well, and it does problem. that on the earth Red. what the fuck is everywhere gravity? on the, earth, the southern exactly. hemisphere you're done hold on uh, <laughs> hold on if, uh, if we were on a spinning globe, <laughs> yeah. we on a globe a gyroscope with a gimbal blade based placed on a level table should show the spin of the earth now we're going to do more on mechanical gyro compasses in the first Physics on Friday next week. But here's the basic difference between a mechanical gyroscope and a laser ring gyroscope. A laser ring or a fiber optic gyroscope works on a different principle. It is free in all three axes of rotation. It will point to an object, say a star, off the planet Earth, and it will continuously point in that direction as, the, as it rotates on the surface of the Earth. Okay, That will measure a 15 degree per hour rotation because that's how fast the Earth is rotating. And you're welcome to have a look at Bob's demonstration of this. Now, a mechanical gyroscope aligns itself with true north on the axis of rotation of the Earth. It is aligning itself to a point on the Earth, not a distant star. Now, no matter where in the rotation of the Earth I am in this office, true north is back that way, okay? It's always going to be back that way. A gyroscope, a mechanical gyroscope in my office will point that way. A laser ring gyroscope will move at 15 degrees per hour, sitting right next to it. That's the difference between the two. That's well, required it for uses a mechanical support. That's right. You're done. All you're doing is affirming the concept. I mean, look, no, we have this man-made mechanical gyroscope. Down to earth, in practice, in use, example of both gravity and rotation. You're done. Now, you don't even know how this thing works. Electromagnetic fields are not generated on any First, you told me you didn't even know how it worked after you tried to make this about a magnetic compass, and you don't even know the difference between a magnetic compass and a gyro compass, do you, Nathan? So did they show any rotation? Yes, that's how they work, you simple. So if you take a, so if you so, take a time lapse of a, of a gyroscope with a gimbal base, the gimbal base will rotate nice. around yeah, the spinning wheel. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah. I've got a gimbal base in the house. Well. So how come you guys all bring up Bob's ring laser gyro if mechanical gyros rotate? They both do. That's how they work. All right, all right, guys, you heard it here. Bob the Fallacy guy says mechanical gyros, the gimbal base, rotates around the flywheel. The compass, it sure does. 
There's four eight-hour, ten, six-hour time lapses of gimbal bases not rotating around you know, a flywheel. You know, on difference between a gyro and a gyro compass, do you, Nathan? Uh, well, compasses use an electromagnetic field, correct? Listen to you, the Earth's electromagnetic. It is a mechanical, a sperry mechanical gyro compass. It's not magnetic, you moron. It's a gyro. So is it a mechanical gyroscope? Yes. It or is, is it a compass? It is a mechanical gyro compass. It finds true north, not magnetic north, by matching the axis of rotation of the Earth. That's how it works. Sounds like another parlor trick to me, Bob. And it's I know, right? And then, then it's just another parlor trick, a never-ending series of parlor tricks from the globe. It just, it just sounds like more nonsense, Bob. Really the water it, it's, it sounds like another one of those things where once you look into it a little bit, uh, it turns out it's just complete horseshit. Just typical globe quote proofs. Just ridiculous, I'm boys. I'm out of here. Thank you. See you later, Jose. Wow. Bob had to rage quit. What an idiot. So, yeah. It's, it, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of what's that thing called? Foucault's pendulum. And Foucault's pendulum is like, oh, this proves the Earth is a sphere because look at this freaking thing, you know, moving back and forth. And then you look into it deeply enough. And it turns out that it's a complete hoax. It, it literally proves nothing. But it's all parlor tricks with these people. That's the reason that people are actually questioning the globe because it's bullshit. Well, folks, there you have it. A mechanical gyro compass requires both gravity and a rotating Earth in order to point to true north. There's hundreds of thousands of these instruments in service on ships all over the world. They work in the Northern Hemisphere. They work in the Southern Hemisphere because they do not require a magnetic field. This is important on a magnetic object like a ship made out of metal. It's a very accurate navigation instrument. It's tried and proven. It's settled technology and it works. So attempting to hand wave this off and then say that even the Foucault pendulum doesn't demonstrate rotation. Nothing demonstrates rotation. Bob's $20,000 laser ring gyroscope, which clearly showed 15 degrees per hour rotation, doesn't measure rotation to you. Well, guys, there it is. It's rotating. Get used to it. Well, Next week, we're going to start physics on Friday, and we're going to talk about mechanical and fiber optic and laser ring gyros. So I hope to see you then. In the meantime, give it a like, give it a subscribe by hitting that little button down there, and I'll see you next time. Take care, guys.